that, that was true. But as far as going back and, and meeting William, you know, Spike before Spike, I used to get asked in interviews, like, what was Spike like before he was a vampire? Was he a badass even before then? I was like, oh, yeah. Character like that? Oh, he was a punk rocker before, but obvious, you know? And when they wrote that script and I saw that character, I felt kind of exposed because I'm, I'm probably a little closer to William in real life than Spike. I mean, who's, who's close to that? Who's not in jail? <laughs> and I, I was like, damn it, the whole world thinks I'm cool. And they, I decided, I decided that, that probably probably the, the audience was not going to like that character. They were not going to want to see that. But I was going to be the grand first monitor to fight for and to love him and to show some dignity to him. And that was kind of my mission when we were filming it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. I feel that whole thing. I feel that diaper money thing. Yeah, anything for the diapers. Those things are expensive. Form. Form. Is it Hi, my name is Sam, and my question is, you talked a lot about your years in the theater. Is there a favorite performance you've gotten to give on stage, or if you're not comfortable answering that one, you're still looking forward to giving one day? No, I'm, there's a lot that I'm really proud of. I could go on. Uh, there was a, a Macbeth uh, that I did right before I came to uh, Los Angeles, up in Seattle. Um, Macbeth is low-hanging fruit. It's, it's known as one of the masterpieces, but whenever you see it, it sucks. Like, why is that? And I, I read a really good book that, that really said, this is why the play doesn't work. These are the mistakes most people make. And I took notes, and I fought for the way I thought it should be, and we had such a hit that um, the, the artistic director lost his job over it because the board of directors hired a bigger gun. Uh, but it was like, it was a massive hit. Uh, so, but I had, to, I had to swim upstream for that. You know, I had to fight against the director who wanted to direct it like the normal movies. Like, Lady Macbeth is not a, that's the big mistake people make. It's, it's, it, it, we, we, she's a strong woman. That's it, you know, and she, she, she brings her husband to task, but if, if you make her, then the whole play falls apart. The whole theme of the play it just doesn't land at all, so you have, there's a million other things. I'm sorry, I love that. Um, there's a, a play called Dollhouse by Heinrich Ibsen, which is one of the first feminist uh, plays. Um, about a woman in the 1870s in Norway, I think. And she decides that the, the marriage that she's in is so constricted that she's got to get out and leave. But she has kids. But she decides to leave anyway because she, she has to be getting suffocated by the sexism in the house. And I play Torval, who is usually played as such a sexist. That the play doesn't work because it's like a three hour play and the whole audience is just waiting for Nora to leave this guy. Because the, the audience can't stand him. And I told the director I was playing the role and I said, look, this is not an indictment of Torval. This has got to be an indictment of the whole society. So to do that, Torval has got to be the, the most enlightened guy in town. He's got to be the most sensitive guy in town, the most loving guy in town. And, and he is still suffocating her. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And so when we, and I had to fight for that one, but when we opened the play, we were, we were doing the end of the play where she finally is talking to Torvald and she's about to leave him. And we hear this sound, and the actress and I are, are like, we're doing the, the scene, but both of us are like looking around at the audience, like, what is that sound? And we, we realize there's people crying. They were so sad that these people had to break up, but it was obvious they had to. So there's so many. God, I could go on and on. But those are two. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just going to do some of the little sound. I can feel my foot up. Hello. Behind you. I'm going to do that for a while. I'm going to do that Wow. It's like I have hundreds of children and you want me to choose one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I have favorites. <laughs> Don't tell them. Um, Fool for Love that we talked about before. I, I love doing uh, stunts because I came from stage, and it's the stage you don't get a stunt, man. You know, it's, when I came to Hollywood, I was like a stunt. Give me a break, you know, I got this. Um, so I actually did probably too many of those stunts because in Hollywood, you do it on concrete, which is a whole different thing than doing it on a wooden stage. A wooden stage is like a trap compared to what they do in Hollywood. But, um, so in Fool for Love, I got to fight uh, three amazing stunt women. Uh, who would play the three slayers? Three? Is it two? It's Nikki? Fox Rebellion. Fox Rebellion. Is it three? Two. Fox Rebellion, then New York Train, and then there was another one. Uh, it was two. It was two. That's what we can remember. So, <laughs> what the Fox Rebellion was Bruce Lee's second cousin, Ming Lee who is the deadliest human I have ever met in my life. <laughs> she is not a large person, but she is fat, and she is specific, and she's liquid, and there's power in that. And thank God she's a nice person. <laughs> like, um, she, she's, uh, but, uh, like, she teaches at the dojo to this day, but like, I, I offended her, because I, like, I was excited to have a sword, because I, I know sword work, but I never got a sword on Buffy because you have fangs as a vampire who need, you know, like a weapon, you have a weapon. And, but I had a sword that day, and so I was like, dang, this is fun! And I kind of flourished too close to her, and she kind of went... <laughs> and she just took her sword and just went... <laughs> right up my nose. Okay. <laughs> but I got, to, I got to fight her again uh, in Marvel's Rumbles. And she was doubling uh, uh, a teenage character. And she had not lost a step. She was just as fast, just as liquid as she ever was. And I was a little older. And I was like, Ming, slow down. <laughs> I cannot keep up with you anymore, man. But we got it done. Um, so that was definitely a favorite. The musical, for sure, was one of the best. Yeah. And then, then the body, actually, which is, you know, I wasn't in that one, but I think that that one was one of our best ones. I mean, we proved that we didn't need vampires, actually. You know, it could just be a drama about a young woman that's losing her mind. Yeah, those are my three favorites. Thank you. And then I get to the end of the chapter and the verse is like, 
willing to murder one teenager a year will save the planet. But he never makes the technology because he's a sorry. Um, I always used to argue that Victor Stein was the biggest hero of the whole thing. And I would do this to journalists and be like, um, you're murdering people. And I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about that. So I'm playing a character who devoted his life to trying to find a new energy source, like fusion power. Because we got to stop burning things for energy, like cavemen, it's killing us. And he comes to middle age and he's failed. He hasn't got it done. And this alien gives him this, this deal. And I said, what would you do? Would you let all of humanity die so that you could go to your grave with a clear conscience? Or would you cut one moral corner and let people spit on your grave? You know, that's what Victor's doing. You may call me a, a, a villain. You can call me a horrible man, but I'm gonna let you live. Spit on my grave, it's okay. And he makes that deal. And, and they're like, I never thought of it that way, James. Oh. But wait a minute, you're, you're beating your son. Well, let's talk about that one. <laughs> So my son has 178 IQ, and he's getting C's in high school. Now, at what point do you stop saying, great job, son, you'll do better next year. And you're like, what time, at what point do you put the hammer down? I think that's a piece of discipline. Now, I can argue that I'm going too far that way, but is it worse to go too far that way or too far and let him get away with that? And they're like, I never really thought of it that way. I'm like, just kidding, Victor's horrible. <laughs> But I, I, I love a, a man that loves his son and loves his wife that much and made a horrible mistake that he can't get out of. That was, that was a great role. Yeah. It was a great show. Um, is there a Marvel character you would prefer to do? They're all taken. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually a few more that are left. But I mean, it's Marvel. They're never all taken. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Again, we're bumping up against this problem. Like I've never thought, I've never sat and thought about that. Because like, because like John Lennon says, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. So like, I can, like, what do I want to have? This? No, they'll call me for another role. You know? I had no idea. What? Would... Love you. Oh. <laughs> I was just telling somebody in line. That's the one guy that I'm jealous of. Is Tom Middleton? Is that role? Is but there are a lot of vampires in <laughs> Morpheus. <laughs> Save that role. <laughs> watching Angel, I love watching the story arc with Spike, from Drew to Buffy, and then the great sacrifice and all that. And I thought, Spike's been great, Spike's done. And then you got to come back on Angel. What was it like starting a new series? I know it's, I mean, it's got some commonalities, but did it feel like it's a fresh start? I can do something new? Or what did you think? How did it feel? I, my favorite part of Buffy was the beginning. Because, okay, when, when you play a secondary character on a TV show, most of the time you're like, good idea, Buffy. What do we do now, Buffy? You got it, Buffy. Now, Buffy? Okay, guys, Buffy says it's okay, let's do it. You know, that's kind of the thing. But I was the one person who like, you stupid, Buffy, we all going to Like, that is a good role. And then, Spike falls in love with Buffy. I'm like, what do we do now, Buffy? Oh, is this Buffy? Would you like a cup of tea, Buffy? And so, like, I, I, I lost that, that role, you know, that, that part. Um, and then I got over on Angel, and I was like, oh, this is the good old days. I'm here to give this man a head. <laughs> you know? I'm the one person who gets a head. You know? um, I just sneer at him. You know, like, oh, it's just gold. You know, so, so it, it felt like a return kind of to the original Spike. Even though he had a soul, he's still hating it. And, <laughs> and David and I got along great. But it was when they called back, she just like revenue this film. We're trying. We enjoyed it too. Thank you. <laughs> Raven, being so patient. I 
well, okay. First of all, I have to admit to a huge mistake. I sang that song without an accent. Go listen to it again. Let me rest in peace. Let me get some sleep. I'm not a British guy. Yeah, you know? But Mick Jagger kind of sounds American when I sing rock and roll, so I kind of get away with that one. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, I was comfortable singing um, publicly because I was already in a band. We were already we in a at that time. Um, Tony Head was already comfortable singing because uh, he, was, he was doing albums already. So he and I were unfazed by seeing the rest of the cast. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Like Sarah asked if she could, she was serious too. Can I please juggle chainsaws? <laughs> that is safer for my career than singing. You're going to ruin me. You know, like I'm, I am, I, I can hire me to be a one camera dramatic slash comedic actor. That's what I do, that's what I'm trained for. And now you're gonna send me out in front of millions of people doing something that I don't think I can do. You're killing me, you know? Uh, but she rocked it anyway. So did anybody else. Um, but yeah, that part, that part was easy for you. I didn't think the songs were good. I was wrong. I, I admit that, but I'm a punk rocker, and Joss sent us cassette tapes of him singing the song. And as a singer, he's a great writer. <laughs> and it was just him plunging around on the piano singing the songs. And like, we all had the same reaction. Like, they, we all got this cassette tape and for lunch one day, and we all came out after about 15 minutes and like, we were all holding up the cassette tape going. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it kind of cheated me. But he wouldn't be deterred, you know, none of the producers would be and it to it, and it worked out, so yeah. But then, so, we, it did work out, and by the end of filming, we kind of knew it was working, and we were getting a little bit proud of ourselves, like, we were actually really good at this. <laughs> and then Hilton Battle came to town, and Hilton played sweet, and Hilton is a double Tony Award-winning Broadway actor, and he laid that whole scene down in two takes. Every little move, and that's that. And we're just, we're being filmed watching him, and we're just like, oh, that's how you do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're screwed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we got away with it, yeah.
really interested in being part of that. Uh, what's your name? Firefly. You were supposed to guest star Firefly at one point. Oh my god, I'd love to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's five was going to be on Firefly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he's, he's a vampire. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, like, there was a point where Josh took me and toured. He, he showed me all the sets on Firefly, and he had me meet all the cast and everything. And I was like, oh, you're being nice. I have no idea why you're doing this. Oh, but he, he, guess he wanted to know if I'd get along with him. We got along great. And, and he, he's still with me, and, and then they got canceled. So. You know, Nathan is here, you guys just do your own little scene.
year around the convention circuit for the past five years, uh, non-pandemic excluding. I'm from Los Angeles, so we have been two ships of the night, so how do you one? But my actual question for you today is, outside of the writer's specter, how would you have imagined Spike's story to go on? What would you have liked to see from him as an actor, whether it's losing his soul, going crazy, uh, interrupting the musical and telling everyone to saw it off, or, you know, in your wildest dreams, what would you have liked to see Spike do? Yeah, I actually wrote a comic book about this, uh, about my idea about what happens to Spike after I think I have it. Uh, <laughs> Do you know if that was sanctioned or you were actually like, so thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, like, how do you start a redemption arc for Buffy? Because my, my favorite line in Buffy is when Buffy says, I love you, he says, no, you don't, but thanks for saying it. Because to me, that is Spike saying, I know I'm not good enough for you, yet. <laughs> right? Like, I am beneath you. And what I gotta do is I gotta go out to the world and figure out what to do with his soul. I've basically gotta grow up. And, and as soon as he feels like he's done that, he's coming back to Sunnydale and they get married. You know? Which happens in the comics. Thank you. <laughs> Suck it, Angel. I win. <laughs> so the whole thing is, is like, if you're gonna do a redemption arc in the, a vampire redemption arc in the Buffy universe, how do you not retread Angel? So, if Angel is a mythic character, and he's always in a mansion, and a big fireplace behind him, sipping port wine, what about my soul, <laughs> Like, Spike should be the opposite of that, and he can't, he can't kill anyone for lunch, so he should be starving to death. He can't steal anything to clothe himself, so he should, his clothes should be falling off him, and he can't get any new clothes. He should have trouble finding places to sleep, because he can't, like, sneak in illegally, because he's got this soul that's bothering him, to do that, so he should really be in trouble. Don't you and, hate that with your soul and your conscience because it does you? Right, right? Yeah. It's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, happy Friday. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> Guys, you are fabulous.